A production fee for your hometown health connection was made by Buffalo Healthy Living Magazine and its sponsors. Doctors are seeing an increase of patients suffering from carpal tunnel symptoms. A weakened hand or a grip can make everyday tasks much more difficult. On this episode of your hometown health connection, I'll sit down with Dr. Paul Patterson of General Physician PC, and we'll discuss some of the causes of hand weakness, the symptoms, and the treatment options available. We'll also take you on a behind the scenes look of an actual surgery where patients can return home with no stitches, no lengthy recovery time, and in many cases, they're pain free in just about two days. All this and more on your hometown health connection. I'm Samantha Latshaw. Welcome to your hometown health connection. If your wrists have started to feel the wrath of your not so ergonomic desk setup, this program is for you. Here to answer all your questions surrounding carpal tunnel syndrome is Dr. Paul Patterson of General Physician PC. Dr. Patterson is a hand and upper extremity specialist treating injuries and conditions ranging from the fingertips to the shoulder. He also offers a microinvasive surgical technique, the only place in the region where you can get this procedure. Dr. Patterson practices at Erie County Medical Center's Ambulatory Care Center in Buffalo. Dr. Patterson, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. It's good to be here. Now, you do a lot of great work at General Physician PC, and you're also the only doctor in the region that offers a microinvasive technique to help relieve carpal tunnel syndrome. Now, before we get to that, tell me a little bit more about what you do. Well, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I've been in the area now for over 20 years, uh, and I specialize in pretty much any ailment that goes from the shoulder to the fingertips. So uh, from, the, from the hands and the fingertips now, the hands are a very complex area. So tell me a little bit about the symptoms that someone might uh, experience perhaps at an earlier age in life and at an older age in life. With respect to carpal tunnel syndrome yes. that is? Um, they're usually pretty much the same, which is pain is the overriding or the most common symptom that somebody will present with. Usually what they describe is burning and a tingling pain usually involves the thumb, index, middle, and possibly part of the ring finger. Usually worse at night. The other common time is when people are driving a car or reading a book. Uh, oftentimes they'll talk about getting up in the middle of the night and having to shake their hand to get their blood flowing. Um, and interestingly enough, that's actually what they're doing to help get rid of their symptoms. So let's go a little deeper. What exactly is carpal, tun carpal tunnel syndrome? Carpal tunnel syndrome is a family of medical term, the fancy medical term would be compression neuropathy. Mm -hmm. And that means a nerve is getting squeezed. And there are two bad things that happen when a nerve gets squeezed. The first is, is it decreases the amount of blood supply to the nerve. And when that happens, patients have symptoms, they have pain. The other thing that happens is, is that there is material that's being transported down the nerve in this tube. And when it gets to that area that's being squeezed, there's sort of a backup, if you will. And then that nerve starts to get bigger but the problem is, is that the space was already too tight. So now you've got tight and it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter because the transport will continue and the nerve will continue to get bigger. And that's why surgical treatment is so often the treatment of choice for treating any compression neuropathy, whether it's carpal tunnel syndrome or say sciatica mm -hmm. or something in your neck. They're all the same sort of physical problem. So what does it feel like if you do have carpal tunnel syndrome? Again, what usually you'll say you'll have a burning, mm -hmm. tingling feeling in your hands, uh, waking you up from sleep, keeping it hard. Another thing that people will talk about is if they're trying to do some work on a computer or something like that, uh, or write, they'll oftentimes start to get their symptoms at that point as well. Now, those markers, how do they differ from something, let's say arthritis, pain, a pinched nerve, or even perhaps the start of MS? It's going to be very specific, usually, mm -hmm. to the thumb, index, middle, and ring fingers mm -hmm. uh, as far as the distribution of the pain. Um, arthritis pain is usually more localized and just to the joint. Um, arthritis pain is also more likely to be an activity-related pain. So they're actually doing something and something gets sore, and oftentimes, there's, particularly in the hand where it's easy to be seen, there can be swelling with it. How, does the time of day affect it, morning or night? usually at night, and the reason that is, if you think about this nerve that's being squeezed and the one problem is the lack of the blood supply, mm -hmm. at night when you go to sleep, your blood pressure goes down. Yeah. 
when your blood pressure goes down, now you don't have enough pressure of blood getting into the nerve. And so again, you get your symptoms, you have pain, you wake up, your body's actually pretty smart. It starts to shake the hand, which increases the blood flow to the nerve, gets rid of your symptoms, and then you can lay down and go back to sleep again. What about weather, perhaps like rain, for example, or heat or, or cold? Not really. Usually that's not as big an issue um, in patients with carpal tunnel syndrome. Might be a little bit more with arthritis conditions. So what happens if I do have this and then I wait too long to see you? What could happen? Over time, if you leave a nerve without the appropriate blood supply, mm -hmm the nerve can start to degenerate um, and you can start to lose function. Uh, in particular with carpal tunnel syndrome, you can start getting permanent numbness potentially in the thumb, index, middle and ring fingers. So the ability to button a button, do up your pants. Mm -hmm. uh, ladies will oftentimes, if they're doing crafts, they'll talk about an inability to do crafts. Oh, wow. um, that's the sensory portion, the sensation portion. Then there's the muscle portion. Um, with carpal tunnel syndrome, the muscle portion, it brings your thumb out into the palm of your hand so they can get your hand around a glass. If that muscle gets weak, what happens is, is that your thumb kind of gets stuck in the back towards the palm of your hand, and then you have a hard time getting your thumb around a bottle of beer for the Bills game, say. <laughs> Oh gosh, it really seems like it can take away a lot of things that you would love to do from your daily life. Well, that and in particular, one of the biggest things is sleep. Once again, it's this sleep disturbance. Uh, it's increasingly apparent that one of the most important things we can do for wellness mm -hmm. is to get a good night's sleep. Absolutely. And if you're waking up in the middle of the night with pain, that's not a good remedy for a good night's sleep. Gosh, there's a lot of people out there that might say, oh, it might go away on its own, or, or let me uh, you know, do a massage or, or something like that, but that's not the case, it doesn't seem so. The symptoms can wax and wane. Mm -hmm. We don't really understand why. There are non-surgical treatments that can help decrease the symptoms. Uh, splinting, particularly at night, can help hold the wrist in a good position and allow the blood flow to keep going. Uh, because it's thought that when people sleep and they curl up like this, it, it can cause a problem. Um, Anti-inflammatory medications like Motrin can help with the pain. Injections can help. But if you take a look at the studies on this, they're all usually temporary. And so what happens is, is the symptoms may go away, but they return months or even years later. Could another condition cause this syndrome? You can get, it can be overlapping with a problem in the neck and a nerve being pressed to there. Uh, it can be confused. There are other nerves in the extremity. So there's an ulnar nerve behind the elbow. This is called cubital tunnel syndrome. The difference usually for as a physician that marks the difference between the two is with a cubital tunnel syndrome, it's the fingers that are, or excuse me, the small and the ring finger that are a problem, not the thumb index and middle finger. With a neck, oftentimes, uh, if you ask the patient to move in certain directions, it'll recreate some of the symptoms that they're having in their hand. And also perhaps women who are retaining fluid. Well, and particularly pregnant ladies. Right. Uh, it's a very common in pregnancy. The fortunate thing about that is, is oftentimes when the baby is born, mm -hmm. the symptoms will go away. And so it's much more common for us to treat those patients non-operatively, right. uh, only those patients who are really suffering will we do the operation in that case. So as far as uh, seeing a doctor, when do you recommend we should, when, when is it time to see a doctor? Again, most people nowadays who I see come to me knowing they have carpal tunnel because it's so easy to look it up on the internet nowadays. And it's good information and it's reliable and it's kind of easy to figure it out because it is so peculiar. You know, patients know that it's worse at night and hey, it's my thumb and index finger. And it's like, oh, I must have carpal tunnel syndrome. When symptoms occur that are really disrupting your life and your lifestyle um, is I think the time to do it. If you get an occasional numbness or tingling in your thumb, index and middle finger at night and it happens once a week and it doesn't disturb your sleep, I don't think that necessarily rises to the level. But if it's happening four or five times a week and it's starting to bother your sleep or disrupt other portions of your daytime activities, then I think it's the time to go see a doctor. Right, because you know you talked earlier about perhaps a shot might help or even a brace. Uh, what about exercises? Are there certain stretches that we could do? 
at yeah. least foregoing the surgery route? So what people will talk about is nerve mobilization exercises. Mm -hmm. And generally it's just taking your hand like this and stretching it out like this. Okay. Oh, right? that does feel good. And just working on just trying to stretch it out like this. And um, again, it will help some patients with some of their symptoms. Have you seen younger kids, you know, we're spending a lot of time on the computer, uh, scrolling on the phone. Are you seeing a younger patient? The most common person to have this mm -hmm. is actually a woman in her mm -hmm. 30s to 40s. Um, and then again, after the 30s to 40s range, it becomes more gender indifferent, if you will, for lack of a better way to put it, in your 70s and 80s. We don't see a lot of young people with this, even with the um, use of games and things like that. Really? Interestingly enough, there's a lot of data that you can bandy about as far as how much that really affects whether or not somebody has carpal tunnel. The best data that we have scientifically of activities that cause carpal tunnel have to do with using vibratory tools. Mm -hmm. So a lot of folks who work in factories with power tools oh. and whatnot, those are the people that seem to be particularly, we can easily create a causation for the carpal tunnel from. Interesting. So I would say it's kind of a misunderstanding or a myth that people think typing and scrolling on your phone are like one of the main causes, but it doesn't seem so. That would be correct in my book, yes ma'am. Would sports play an issue? Not usually. Uh, again, unless I can't think of a sport that would use a vibratory tool, but no, not really, shouldn't be an issue. W what are some more of the responses that you're hearing from your patients after they have the surgery? Well, as somebody who's in medicine, you know, my, my goal is to try and make people better and, and like meet their expectations about treatment. I, there's nothing I've ever done in my life like this because I exceed patients' expectations every day we do this. Um, they can't believe that it's so easy. They can't believe that it doesn't hurt when you do it. They can't believe that we have fun. They can't believe that their symptoms are gone the next day. They can't believe that they're back doing, playing golf and, play, you know, and playing guitars and back at work in two to five days. It's just, it's, the response has been fabulous. Dr. Patterson, it sounds like to me that these five minutes shouldn't hold you back. You should really get in there and get this if this is causing you pain. If you are having if it is altering and, and keeping you from having a, a good life, then yeah. Doing the things you love. Yeah, it's easy. Ahead, we'll take you on a behind the scenes look where Dr. Patterson performs a microinvasive carpal tunnel surgery. Plus, we'll hear from an actual patient and what they have to say about this groundbreaking technology. If you would like to find out more about how to ease the pain of carpal tunnel syndrome, give Dr. Patterson's office a call at 716 500 hand which is 716-500-4263 to schedule your appointment at one of the three locations. For more information on General Physician PC, you can go online at gppconline.com. Buffalo Healthy Living Magazine is a free full color magazine distributed throughout Western New York. Now, more than ever, as we all want our families and friends to be safe and well, Buffalo Healthy Living Magazine is devoted to health, fitness, and nutrition for people of all ages. It's a great read and also has great recipes. Pick up Buffalo Healthy Living Magazine all over our hometown or go online anytime at buffalohealthyliving.com. Welcome back to your Hometown Health Connection. I'm Samantha Latshaw. With me is Dr. Paul Patterson of General Physician PC. We're talking about carpal tunnel syndrome and treatment options available. Our crew got an inside look at a live surgery with Dr. Patterson and patient Mick Vitrano at his office. Doctor, what are we about to see now? You're about to see just how quick and easy it is to get your carpal tunnel released. Awesome, let's take a look. It's a way of taking and treating carpal tunnel in the most successful way you can, which is surgery. Right. And doing it in one or two visits, doing it in a way that, as you can see, the patients don't really have any pain when we do it. We kind of have fun when we do it. Yeah. I mean, really. Um, patients are very comfortable. 
and afterwards they get relief of their symptoms and they recover very quickly from the surgery. Right. And that's a big change from the way it's done in most places where in order to essentially get the same treatment, you're probably gonna end up seeing a surgeon three, four, five times before you end up in an operating room. You're gonna go other place for tests to be done. Um, all that can be done and compressed into a single visit yeah. or a visit, two visits. Um, we don't usually see people back, which sounds maybe a little bit kind of crazy, but we've done enough of these now that we know how predictable the outcomes are and we know how predictable the recovery is. Yeah. And all the patients, you know, when we talk to them, we say, you know, all you have to do is call, yeah. right? And I, they get my cell number. Yeah. So that we don't want them to feel like they're, they're not gonna get taken care of. It's just that most people, if it goes as well as I expect it does, they don't want to come back here and wait an hour to see me to tell me that everything's going okay. Yeah, right, yeah. Like they have better things to do with their time. Like I'm happy to see them. Yeah. Like I love seeing patients that are happy with what I do. Yeah. But um, it, makes it, it makes it much more efficient and easier for the patient. Well, I, I came here six weeks ago um, and on the referral from Dent Neurological, they told me I had the carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, they said it would be a more accurate reading when they did the sonogram uh, on it and they did the measurements and everything and they told me that that was the reason I was getting um, I was getting numbness in my hand at night and I was getting shooting pains um, at, at times yeah. you know, unpredictable shooting pains every once in a while through parts of my fingers right. um, didn't really realize it was carpal tunnel until they did the test mm -hmm. uh, it was a quick simple surgery took literally the surgery itself took about five minutes uh, the prep took a lot longer, or it took maybe 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, yeah. But um, the relief was almost instantaneous. Um, that was with the first one. Yeah. With the first one, six weeks ago. Yep. Felt a little sore for about two days, but nothing that was, that was, that was tolerable. Uh -huh. Didn't even have to take the pain medication. Uh -huh. uh, but it, uh, so it came back and did the other one six weeks later. Yeah. All and happy I'm, with it, then? I'm very happy with it. I recommend the procedure. I recommend Dr. Patterson. It was just a simple procedure and nice people there, too. He promised me 15 yards on my drives. I'm not sure if he's going to deliver them. <laughs> but as he said, it's going to go this way and that way. <laughs> Dr. Patterson, what a groundbreaking procedure. It is, isn't it? Um, the idea that you can come in in a single visit, get rid of your pain. It's not going to take a lot of effort on your part. We can do it with very little discomfort, almost no discomfort at all. Um, I've been, As I said, I've been in practice for over 25 years, and there's no comparison to how much, how, what an impact this has had for my, both my practice and my patients. Right, and for those needing this surgery, those living in Western New York are sure are spoiled because you're the only doctor, not only in Western New York, but in all of New York State that offers this procedure. At this time, yes ma'am. It's, it's hard for docs to adopt new procedures, um, but I think uh, within the next five years, you'll see this grow quite dramatically. Talk to me about some of the options that other doctors offer. Why is it that there aren't too many people that actually do this? So the most common, well, there are two other procedures that are most commonly done. One is called an open procedure, mm -hmm. where they'll make an incision in the palm of the hand. Uh, it's usually a couple of inches long. Um, great procedure, gets rid of your symptoms, but the recovery can be long, three, six months, and it can leave some permanent soreness. There's an endoscopic procedure where they use a camera but that knife is actually a little bit bigger, usually requires more anesthesia. And in medicine, millimeters matter. And that extra incision and that extra dissection means a little bit longer recovery in some cases. And it's hard to do in an office setting. Being able to do the ultrasound allows us to do it in a simple office setting and do everything in a single visit. Why is it that other doctors don't do this surgery? Well, as a surgeon, Almost everything I do to try and make you better, I have to hurt you first. And so if there's a certain procedure that I'm doing and I understand what the normal outcomes are, both good and bad, it's comfortable. And to change means that you're gonna have to be uncomfortable because things aren't gonna, aren't gonna go the way you want all the time. And so it's hard sometimes to adopt a new procedure. Talk to me about how you actually created this procedure. How did you go about teaching yourself how to do this? Well, I actually, like anything else, get taught by other people. Um, it was a Christmas vacation about three years ago where I got this in my head to try and figure out a way to do this in an office. And I did what everybody else does, which I start cruising around on the internet. 
and I came across a couple of videos with ultrasound guided carpal tunnel release. Subsequent to that, I came across a company that had a really slick and clever device that had a high safety profile and they helped teach me and off I went. Wow. So what are we looking at right now? Let me see. That's an, uh, an ultrasound picture. Kind of looks like Ricky and Lucy in 1965 on your black and white set. Uh, here I'm putting a little uh, extra fluid into the canal and using the ultrasound to guide my needle into the canal. The fluid, is that um, something that would su support the nerve after the surgery? No, what it does is it actually sort of dissects and pushes some of the soft tissues away from the sharp instruments that I'm inserting. This is the knife as we insert it just to make that small incision to get inside the carpal tunnel. Is, was that it. the actual incision or was that? Yep, that's the incision. And wow. here you see a probe that's being put into the canal. This is where you see it. The ultrasound image was uh, what you saw. And we're just sort of just checking and making sure that I know where everything is. Uh, the thing moving back and forth is a, a metal elevator that pushes some of the soft tissues away. It makes a nice path for me to insert the knife that I'm going to use. Are you removing anything in this process or just simply We're, the goal is to make the, the precise snip where you need that? Just the cut. So again, it's this belt that goes across the palm of the hand and all we're doing is dividing that belt. When we divide that belt, it separates probably about four or five millimeters. A lot of people ask me, well, you know, is that going to be a problem going forward? That heals back in. It's sort of like letting some of the material out of your pants, if you will, and it'll heal back in at a longer length. This is that special device that I'm talking about. Uh, it's got a very high safety profile. The knife is enclosed until you're going to use it. There are actually balloons that push the other soft tissues away that we deploy before we deploy the knife. Uh, so it has, an, it has an unbelievable safety margin. You also make this a nice, easygoing environment for the patient. Talk to me about that. Well, in our practice, our motto is, is or our saying every week with every patient that we have is that nobody who came to see us today wanted to come to see us. So we have one goal with every patient and that's when you leave, we wanna make sure you're glad you came. What we need to do for any one patient is gonna be different from patient to patient, but no, I mean, I'm blessed with having the most fabulous staff, Antonio being one of them. Um, they're a really loving, kind staff and, and our goal is to make sure that you feel good. One of the other nicknames for this is the Carpal Tunnel Spa. Um, just trying to make people have the best experience possible. And you also make it fun. Talk to me about the music. Uh, so I always ask patients what music they want to listen right. to. Um, I've listened to opera. I've listened to Quranic chants. Um, anything that makes the patient relax and feel well is what we'll listen to. So as far as after the procedure, you, you had the patient there wrapped up, what is the in initial feeling or sensation or pain level that the patient walks away from? When they walk out of the office, they should still be pretty numb. A few hours later, the numbing medicine will wear off. Oftentimes we prescribe some sort of anti-inflammatory medication. It might be a short course of steroids plus uh, an anti-inflammatory Motrin-like drug for a couple of days. They can take it or not. It depends on what their symptoms are. Um, as I said before, if you're going to have some soreness, it's usually going to be that the first day after. Mm -hmm. We have people, we have that big bandage on. There are no sutures. Uh, the bandage comes off the next day. I want you to start trying to use your hand as best you can for as much as you can. Uh, as I said, usually within two days, people are back to their normal activities with a little bit of soreness. That soreness is usually right in the palm of the hand. Mm -hmm. That can hang around for a couple of months, but it's usually very minor and again, doesn't keep you from doing the things that you want to do. Um, and along with it is the bonus that the symptoms that brought you to the office are usually gone. So you should expect perhaps on the third or fourth day being able to go back to work? Yeah, we do a lot of these on Tuesdays mm. uh, and it's just kind of become a commonplace for me to say, you know, go back to work the following Monday. The following right? Monday. Um, I have a lot of patients that go back the next day. I've had people golfing the next day. I had a young lady where I did, she was a musician. Uh, I did both of her carpal tunnels on the same day on a Tuesday, on a Friday night, she was back in front of an audience playing her guitar. Um, she wasn't playing all of her music that she wanted to play, but she was back in front of an audience earning a living playing a guitar, so. What would you tell someone who's watching this and they're a little skittish? What would you tell them? I completely understand why you're afraid. Anybody getting into surgery should be afraid. Um, but we've done over 2,000 of these now. Um, we know what to expect. 
I'm very confident that if you have carpal tunnel syndrome that we can make you feel better, make you feel better fast uh, with a lot less fuss than most other people can do it. How can someone make an appointment? Uh, there's two ways. You can do the traditional way, which is you can call the office and then maybe you're gonna have to be put on hold or it takes time, right? Um, or uh, we have an online scheduling, so patients can actually schedule themselves uh, just by going online, just as you would with uh, booking an airline ticket. Just go to our website, um, GPPC Online, and you can make an appointment from there. Now, you also have a survey online, just in case to, if maybe you're, you're not sure if you have arthritis or carpal tunnel or something else, you have a survey that people can take. Yeah, uh, it's actually a clinical score called the Kalmuth score. So it's been statistically validated, a series of um, five questions that you can answer about your symptoms. And based on that score, we can tell whether you've got carpal tunnel syndrome with about a 90% accuracy rate. And so we can give you that feedback and you can determine for yourself whether or not you think you have carpal tunnel. Obviously, to make the real diagnosis, you have to have a, you know, an appointment. That's not something you can really do, but it, it gets you in the ballpark anyway. Thank you, Dr. Patterson, for all your groundbreaking work in helping us. If you would like to find out more information about this procedure you saw on your hometown health connection or any other questions regarding carpal tunnel syndrome, give Dr. Patterson's office a call at 716-500-HAND, which is 716-500-4263 to schedule an appointment at one of the three locations. For more information on General Physician PC, you can go online at gppconline.com. If you're still feeling the pain after trying the exercises we've showed you here today or changing up your work setup, it's time to speak to a medical professional. To learn if you could benefit from this groundbreaking procedure, head to the website on the bottom of your screen. It's time to take your life back, and Dr. Patterson and his team can help you get you back to doing what you love most. I'm Samantha Latshaw. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and be well. A production fee for the preceding presentation of Your Hometown Health Connection was made by Buffalo Healthy Living Magazine and its sponsors.